This Saturday is the 75th anniversary of VJ Day. This week, we will celebrate the heroes who brought about that victory over Japan in August of 1945. My next guest was on the USS Pennsylvania in dry dock in Pearl Harbor that Sunday morning. Mickey Ganich was dressed in his football uniform, ready for a game against the USS Arizona for the Fleet Football Championship, when he heard news of an incoming attack. He climbed up to the crow's nest and saw it all. Mickey survived a second attack on August 12, 1945, in Okinawa, when a ship was hit by a torpedo. The next morning, Japan surrendered. Weeks later, Mickey headed back home to the States. The Navy veteran's 100 years old, married 57 years. He and his wife, Barbara, have four daughters, 13 grandchildren, 18 great-grandkids, and nine great-great-grandkids. How are you today? Very good, thank you. It's great to have you with us. I want to hear a little bit about your story. What do you remember about that morning in your football uniform at Pearl Harbor, sir? Well, we were thinking about how important the game was because this was going to be the Super Bowl of the Navy. And uh, uh, we were all ready for it. We were primed for it, and we had a good team, and we're looking, we're looking forward to it, and we're going to be ready to go. And then you heard the attack begin, and you climbed up to the crow's nest. Tell me about that, sir. And my job was a lookout. That's up the crow's nest, about 70, 80 feet higher than the mo most of the deck of the ship. And uh, uh, my job was to report anything that, of interest there, maybe planes, ships, anything I could uh, report. I was a lookout, and that was my job. What do you remember about what you saw that morning up there? Well, I saw a lot of ships burning, uh, uh, planes flying around close enough to some of the planes flying around were uh, close enough I could hit them with rocks if I had any rocks to throw at them. They weren't that close, but they looked awfully, awfully close there. But uh, uh, it's too much to think about because everything was going on, bombs going on, guns shooting in every direction there. It, it just a uh, heck, you didn't have time to really think about it till after it's over. Then you, then you think about what was really happening. You didn't have time to think about it at the time. No, I'm sure you didn't. Um, what do you remember about VJ Day, and what's the significance for you of this 75th anniversary? Well, VJ Day, uh, we were kind of busy because my ship was torpedoed at, o at Okinawa. We were trying to stay afloat there, uh, and they were towing us to Guam, while uh, uh, the peace treaty is being signed in Tokyo Bay. I'm not sure what is the exact time or whether we got to Guam yet because uh, three tugs were towing us to Guam and uh, are doing it about two miles an hour at, uh, uh, for 500 miles. Uh, it, it takes a long time. So uh, I think we were... Uh, on our way to Guam when we're signing a peace treaty, we're glad that it's over and uh, get get back our life and back to normal. It's amazing that you were there from the first moments of this battle all the way through Okinawa, sir. And I know that you have spent a lot of the years since then volunteering. You're a chaplain for the fleet. Uh, tell me what that volunteering for other servicemen has meant to you over the course of your life. Well, I was helped so many times while I was in the service. I dedicated myself to help veterans wherever I could. So I've been a volunteer at the, um, for the VA clinic in, in Oakland there. I got over 9,000 hours volunteering. I've been a volunteer in the uh, community center in, in Oakland there for about 20 years. And uh, so I, I have no idea how many hours volunteering I have, but it was for the veterans. Whatever I can do for the veterans, even though I'm 100 years old there, I still take veterans to their appointments. There, anything I can do to help a veteran, because their veterans come first. I know that you uh, you say that you are obviously a very very proud American. Um, at one point, you said, "If you don't like this country, I'll help you move." That's right. 
That's right. For better for worse, it's the best country there is. Like I said, if they don't like it, I'll help them move to another country wherever they think is better than what we have. I know we have our faults there, but uh, uh, there's no better country that uh, uh, I can think of. Sir, you have served your country uh, in so many ways over the course of your life and your enormous family as well. Uh, so we wish you and your wife, Barbara, well, and we thank you very much for being with us. And we, we send our best to your entire family, sir. We thank you for your service and for sharing your story. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you, Barbara. Our thanks to Mickey and Barbara. That's the story for tonight, Monday, August 10th. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a good night.